I'm Delta Work, and it's time for Very Delta. She will change your life forever. Lola Veronica is here. But first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who nourishes and replenishes dry skin with overnight moisturizing spa gloves. But first, let's get into some things that are very Delta. You know what I love? I love all of our Very Delta supporters, people who watch the podcast and have conversations about it, people who comment. It really is exactly what we need. It's very, very Delta to watch something, form an opinion, uh, be supportive, be excited about something, critique something. That is very, very us. You know what I mean? I feel like that is very what we do. And so that means the world to me. It really is how we know what conversations are resonating with people and uh, how crazy really everyone else is along with me. So thank you for being on that ride. But with that said, there are some things that I notice. uh, And listen, I don't really notice it with us. You know what I'm saying? I don't notice it with us. I notice it with them, right? The other people who aren't so very, very... Delta. They do some really weird things. One of those things that's really, really strange. um, And again, I know where it comes from. You know, we all want someone to know where we're coming from. We all want to be seen. We all want to be heard. We all want to be valued. We all want to be understood and absorbed and digested, right? That's what we do. That's why I'm here. I want other people to understand why I see things the way that I do, why I like what I like, why I love what I love, why I can't stand certain things, why certain things just get on my nerves. And I know there's a community of people out there that also feel the same way. However, we have something that they don't have, and that's a level of decorum, right? That's a level of understanding uh, time, and place, and audience, and room, and who's in the room. So with that said, I have my own personal Instagram account, and many people like to interact with me there. And I think people like to interact with me because they know that I'm readily available. I really do read my messages and respond to people. I really do try to interact with people. And I learned a long time ago uh, when I had Twitter and Facebook and Instagram all simultaneously, I realized that I couldn't be responsible on all three platforms to respond to people. But then there became this comment community where people weren't necessarily saying anything negative uh, or really anything extra positive. They would just utilize the comment section sort of as like a free forum to discuss topics related to me, but without me. And so what I mean by that is I might post a picture and I might say, loving my new dress and had a blast tonight at whatever event. And then people would comment and they would say something nice and then people say something negative and I would maybe just not respond at all or I would stop looking, I would just not look at the comments. Um, And then there would be people, there would, and then there would be people who would say something like, I would really like it if Delta started doing whatever, the opposite of this. So say it's a picture with a blonde wig. They would say, I would really love it if Delta would wear more red wigs. Anyone agree? Or 
I just don't think this is a great fit for Delta. And it's strange to me because they can see that I'm the person who posted it. They know that it's my personal account. And they know that I interact with people. They can look at my story and see that I share. I just find it strange that they wouldn't just say, hey, Delta, I'm looking at this picture and I love it. Or I think this is a wonderful fit on you. It's so interesting to me, this commenting community. I Again, I know that people know that I don't want to start any shit with them. So I don't need them to say like, if I posted a picture of this, there's going to be somebody. I think you should have added a little more uh, you know, yellow flowers and that would have taken this to the next level. No, it wouldn't have. This, I'm at the level I need to be at right now. I don't post any pictures because I need somebody to tell me that I should wear a softer pink lipstick. This is the, this is this. I looked in the mirror. You see what I'm saying? And if this is not something that you're comfortable with or you don't like, that's absolutely fine. You can just move on to something that you do like and you can support, or you can say, Hey, I'm going to make it my mission to start talking about pink lipsticks and how I think people should start wearing various shades of pink lipsticks. Put that on your Instagram. Maybe it'll make its way in the algorithm to me and maybe I'll learn. I really don't think when people post a picture that they are posting it so that other people let them know what they like and don't like about something. Of course, do we want uh, someone to recognize something and say you look wonderful? Yes, that would be nice. I don't want you to lie about it and force yourself to have to tell me because you think that's what I want to hear. But if you want to share something complimentary, I think we're always open to that. I think everyone's open to that. But when unless but unless someone expressly asks for advice like, do you guys like my earrings or should I take the flowers out of my hair? Unless you get an open-ended question like that, it's not an invitation to tell somebody how they could improve their look. It's just not, it's just strange that that would happen, that, that people in this day and age would still go to do that. And as I said, when I had three platforms, three social media platforms that I actively used, I absolutely needed to be in the right headspace and friends informed me and said, you don't need to have these conversations with people because it's just, it bugs you because not that you're mad about the opinion, you're mad about the audacity, the audacity that someone would come in and, and, and let you know, Hey, I bought, uh, I bought the same Christmas tree you guys bought, but mine is better this way and this way and this way. I think what happens is a lot of people do that because they don't have anyone else to talk to. And it really does boil down to something a little bit sadder and a little bit, it really is more reflective of themselves than it is of me or of anybody else who's getting these sort of negative commentary. It's really, really strange. And it's not definitely not an issue between people who are very Delta or are very Randolph or very Marie or very anybody. People who are aware of the space that they take, aware of who's hearing them, aware of the adjacencies and the trajectory of everything that they say. Those people already know this. It's this outside noise of a million people that want to say things just because they want to get a rise out of someone. Not a, and, and, and the thing is, the rise is never based in the actual insult or the actual advice. It's based in the fucking audacity that you, I would never, I just ran across a friend who actively uses their social media and their voice to petition for other people to be inclusive and other people to not post negative comments. And I happen to just be looking at Instagram falling asleep because, you know, I either look at Instagram or TikTok to fall asleep. And it's not until I'm looking like this and my phone falls on my face that I realize, put the phone down. You have to go to bed now. So I was looking at that and this video popped up and it was of an athlete and it has a, a viral sound of a sports announcer talking about not the person who was in this video. They just laid it over the video over another athlete. But the, the sports announcer was talking about an athlete who had really thick legs. And it was a, it was a, a male identifying announcer talking about a male athlete. And he said, look at his thick legs. Look at how strong he is. His, his, his lower body is very powerful. He's got a bubble butt. Look how strong that bubble butt is. And he was really just talking about, you know, and it, Laid over other athletes, it sounded it sounded a little bit like lascivious and weird, and maybe it was, I don't know. But I looked at it, and I could see the first comment, and I went, oh my God, how weird. I'm just randomly scrolling. I know that name. And the name was this person. 
who I'm saying actively says people shouldn't comment comment negative things. People shouldn't uh, come for people. People shouldn't talk about people's weight. And by the way, a person who also could lose about 75 pounds herself and had to say, Ew, that athlete looks like he needs to lose a little weight. And I thought, there you are. I found you. You're a chicken shit bitch. I knew you would. I knew somebody would show their face or in this case, show their ass. See, people do that. They act like one thing, but then they're over here doing this. You know what I mean? It's like you have to do the same thing in the dark that you would do in the light. Whether a million people are watching you or not, don't be chicken shit. Don't go up on people's posts commenting negative things or in posts that you don't even think anyone's going to see it. Somebody's going to see it. And if you do have something negative to say, to, and if you do have something negative to say, stand by it. Maybe you do have something negative to say, not to me, not to people who are very, because we don't stand for that shit at all. We are not asking for opinions unless we expressly put a question mark at the end of the post. We are not asking for you to deter us from our happiness. We are not saying in this, I feel really great in this. Give me the reasons why I shouldn't feel so great. I spent this amount of money on this item. Tell me why I'm wrong. Should I have done X, Y, and Z? That's what we, if, if we ask you, should I have done X, Y, and Z? That's when you give your opinion. That's when you give your opinion deterring what we did. But unless someone asks for your opinion, don't fucking offer it up. That is so gross. That is not very at all. Do you want to see me take a break? Because I think you want to see me take a fucking break. After the break, Lola Veronica gets very Delta Orange Diamond. Welcome back. I am so excited. This is an absolute icon. And when I say icon, I really mean someone who knows how to do a little bit of everything in the drag industry. I'm so honored that my friend is here. An absolute legend, the one and only Lola Veronica is here. Thank you so much, Delta. It's a pleasure, very much pleasure being here with you today. I'm so grateful that you made time to be here. But everyone calls you Lola. Yes. I yes, mean, yes. you know what? I think there was a moment on like Facebook, Instagram, where everybody was putting a second name. Right. So people say like, well, they'll tell Raja. Hi, Raja Gemini. And she's like, well, it's just Raja. But I put Gemini because it is part of the name. Of course. But people always just say like, you know, usually like the first name. So everybody knows you as Lola and every single person worth their weight in anything in Southern California knows that uh, you as related to nightlife events. Yes. You've been doing you've been doing drag since before what before there was an arena. Before there was an arena, yes. Yeah, tell us about that. Well, I want to say I started back in uh, 87, mm -hmm. where I started doing shows at a club called Faces, which is no longer there. I started doing shows there with the uh, Asian crowd mm -hmm. because I was accepted there because it was mostly men dressed up in women's clothes, like a drag show. Mm -hmm. So, And then they found out that I spoke Spanish because... Um, Latino and um, so they said yeah we'll take you and we'll take you and let's do you know you could do, host a show here so I worked there for about two years and then after a while they had stopped doing the shows there because they closed the club down faces and they opened up a club called Temple which mm -hmm. is a Latino club so I had the first night doing a show there which I still have the magazine and I still have everything that I kept I the first that. flyer, <laughs> and one of the one of the guys, one of the managers from Circus came and saw my show, and he says, "Hey, you know, how come you don't do your shows at Circus?" And I said, "Well, I had gone to go see the show to ask if I could perform, and at the time, you know, I weighed about four hundred pounds and really didn't look like anybody, and you know, my stuff was mostly fun." you know, entertaining, stuff like that. So David had said, come to the show. I'm going to book you so you can do the show. So that's how I started working at Circus, and I've been there for 10 years at Circus, working at Circus. Um, and then we opened up Arena in 92, and then Madonna did her Truth or Dare party there in 92 when she opened. She opened actually opened up a show wow. there. Um, but... Um, then I got fired because 
they hired some other guy who was an idiot and mm -hmm. he's no longer with us. May he rest in peace. But he didn't like me. He, he wanted to bring his crowd in there and fire me. But it's okay. I got hired again to do with uh, work with Club Poppy. Yeah. So, I've been with him for 27 years. That's what most people know. I mean, when you hear Club Poppy, you think of Lola. Yes. Immediately. Even though we know Club Poppy definitely has excellence in dancers and uh, excellence in promotion and, and being um, very, um, very visible in so many cities. Yes. I mean, all over the place. And you've traveled with all of that. You've seen so many different, uh, I hate to use the word faces because we're talking about a club called Faces, but you've seen this so many different faces that have come and gone uh, in those venues. What's it like being the queen of all go-go dancers? Because everyone knows. Uh, I, you know, don't consider myself the queen of go-go dancers. You know, everybody I just, else does every, though. Well, everybody thinks that I blow them. That's what it is. <laughs> and you do. <laughs> Back then I used to. <laughs> I'd be like, do you, mean, do you want me to help you? You know, and I would, you know, just barely touch the tip of it. And just stuff a little like bit. That. Just mm -hmm. a little bit. Just go down. Gentle. Gentle, but no. Um, but most of the time, I didn't really do uh, that. I mean, back then, yes, I was a little crazy and I would, you know, blow here and there. But it was fun. All in fun. You know what I mean? Just to get the guys hard so they could go out and dance. But... It was a public service. It was a public service right. to me. Exactly. Right. One of the and things you was, offer. I enjoyed. I enjoyed every shape and size of, you know, penis that I've had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's I mean, your favorite one? I, I, well, I like uncut. Uh-huh. I love uncut dick. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Flavor savers. Yes, uh -huh. I think. No, well, some of those, most of the times, like, if you're smart enough and you know that you're going to be out and about, I mean, sometimes I would go to Pollo Loco. Okay. And I would get those little, little wipes. Okay. And if the dick smell, you pull the well, pull the wipe and shine the head and just suck it. Oh, like that? Oh, that's yeah. a, okay. So you have your own, your my own, own little ideas. Yeah, because, you know, and that served you well during the pandemic. I yes. bet to keep so sanitary. Yes, yes, yes. Because I nobody wants to suck a smelly dick. At least well, I don't. Well, some people do. Well, they're into that. Like I can't. I have to have a smelly dick. I can't have a smelly dick or a smelly no. butt. We can go on and on and on about these, uh, about the go-go dancers. But I'm also curious about all the places because we're talking about club poppy in San Francisco, probably San Jose, LA, TJ. There's a lot of cities. Sacramento, Sacramento, Houston, Austin, uh, Mexico. Wow. Do you have a, do you have a, a, like a location where you always, I mean, it always pops off no matter where club poppy is. It's always going to pop off, but do you have a place where it just gets extra wild? Mm, well, our TG parties are wild. Yeah. So our TG parties are very, very wild, which is fun because it's, uh, since it's Tijuana, everybody walks around. We're actually going to be having a party pretty soon, mm -hmm. uh, in May. So you should come girl. And everyone walks around naked? Naked. Can we walk around naked? No, you if you want to, you can. But I don't walk around naked, no. no. Not I anymore? Don't. No, not no more. I don't do that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Nobody wants my fat ass. <laughs> no. Oh, they do. <laughs> no, they don't. Oh, well, maybe they already had it. They haven't had it. Trust me. I know girls that have stories about you. You know, we used to hang out. Uh, I don't know if people know. They've heard us talk about um, the Yukon. The Yukon, yes. Which was the place. Uh, it, it's it's The location is there. Uh, it's where the Trader Joe's is in the bank, and there's a little dog park. It's across the street from, what is it, West Hollywood Park? Yeah, is that what it's called? right on Santa Monica. Santa Monica? And it used to be a restaurant, if people don't know, that was like themed like an old mining town kind of thing. Yeah. So turn of the century, uh, and it was wooden inside. But we would go there after peanuts, or people would go after circus, or different places. Everyone kind of had their own place that they would go after clubs. So it wasn't necessarily... Like if you went after peanuts, you wouldn't necessarily always go further down this way or that way. You might just go to Yukon. Of course. And that's where the girls would go. The working girls would go. The patrons would go. Um, and uh, it I was think most of, the, most of the working girls went to the Yukon. Right. Because that's where I actually knew all of them. Right. Right. Well, you know, going from... Because I remember going from circus in arena going to the Yukon because I would meet my friends that would be at Peanuts and we'd come to Peanuts and come there. And then we would all gather around the table and and then they're like, okay, we got to go. We got to go make some money. And then you remember the parking lot at Peanuts. It right. was like a carousel of cars. Right. You know, even the sheriffs would stay there and they wouldn't do anything to us, but they were so cool about it. 
But it was like a carousel of cars just going around. No, but and truly, around. you're not even lying. When you say carousel, it wasn't like a couple of cars. Like the cars would stay at same cars. Same cars. <laughs> all night long. I mean, yes. You could be at Yukon for three, four hours yeah. minimum. Oh, I would come home sometimes at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Uh, because, and there was, there was just so many hot guys that would be there looking for people like us dressed up or, you know, there was a majority of, there was, there was a lot of interesting was, men. Well, there was a lot of celebrities that would come through. That, oh yeah. That, you know, to this day, a, a lot of the girls, uh, that were there would just not bring up, but no. everyone knew. Because like they it, had, they made their money off of it. Right. Them. Exactly. Of exactly. Of I remember LaShawn's or LaShawn's Devereaux telling me this story one time. She was like, Girl, I was at Yukon and fucking Lola was in the parking lot. I said, Who is who is that down there in that car? She's like, and I walked down. She's like, and it's a strip mall, obviously. There's other like a travel agency and stuff. She said, Bitch, I went down there and Lola was getting her ass ate in this car. <laughs> and I just saw her and she looked out the window at me and she said, Girl, give me a grilled cheese and fries. I'll be in in like twenty minutes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> this is the story. And LaShawn's is like, girl, Lola, I mean, what are you going to do? And it's true. Like, we joke uh, about, like, um, you know, like I said, like, oh, would we go to Club Poppy and would we be naked? And you said, nobody wants my fat ass. There was an interesting time at UConn when there were so many different guys coming there. There was. That there was literally somebody for everyone. There was. And when people would say, like, uh, oh, that ugly guy over there, he's only going to want an ugly girl. Or this good looking guy is only want a good... It would surprise everyone that the one that would be like the hottest guy to them would only want the hottest girl. And he might be the guy that's like, no, I want the big girl mm -hmm. or no, there might be like, uh, you know, it just it never it never registered to people that Correct. at that time we were learning that people had so many um, different desires and they were comfortable expressing it. Like you said, there's always someone for somebody. Right. But back then it was much more open because. It wasn't that much judgmental like it is today, Right. I feel. Um, I mean, I've had some amazing, hot, beautiful, muscle, beautiful guys. Mm -hmm. And when I was weighing 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. And I, w I don't regret it at all. I don't no. regret it at all, you know? No, you've always had hot guys around. Always. And that's just not at work. That's just a fact, and everyone knows it. <laughs> and you are a connoisseur because you really have been the person that's always carried yourself saying... It's not difficult for anybody to have sex. Everybody can get whatever they want. Of course. And you knew that, but you were always like, I want what I want. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be with somebody who's being with me for like a freak show or whatever. I want somebody that's like, no, I'm very interested in this two-way street that's wonderful. And you've always really held that for yourself. And that's why people don't really have like these funny, like like you're, you're on front street about your life. Mm -hmm. You are. And a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not this way. Oh, I was never that way. And you're like, no, I was every way. Mm -hmm. And that's just how you've lived. It's like, why am I going to beat the bush? What, beat around the bush? It's like, you're not an angel. I'm right. not an angel. We've done this shit before. So it's like, hello. Right. You can't tell me you've never sucked a dick before. You've eaten ass right. or done. I've done it. If I've done it, you've done it. Right. None of us here are, are angels or we're not virgins. Trust me. Right. I want to do that one time. I've never done that. Shut but up. <laughs> What's that like? That's so different. Mm. How did you learn? I don't know. Maybe we should look at the, the video tapes that we had back at Peanuts when you were in the background. Yeah, pull up the videos. Mm -hmm. Pull up the videos. You have the receipts. That's yeah. for damn. You know, it's so funny. Uh, I was talking to Josh Peace about, um, about going down Santa Monica Boulevard. And I rarely go from the freeway all the way down. And as you know, no matter where you come from in L.A. or Orange County, Riverside, whatever, the drive to West Hollywood on the freeway is not is is not what takes so long. It's getting off the fucking freeway and driving all the way down to like of Mickey's course. or whatever. It takes forever. But we were talking about how when you go down now and you stop at each light and you look around, you're like, it's almost like the ghosts of what you remember was there. You're like, I remember when Del Taco was right here. I remember when Circus was right here. I remember getting in a funny truck over here. I remember going to the pleasure chest for the first time thinking it was going to be so dangerous. And you're like, bitch, that's mild. Right. The pleasure chest ain't shit. Like, I can remember all those things. And I know you can, too. Oh, I, I can remember a lot of it. Yeah. A lot of it. I mean, coming down Santa Monica, once you get off the freeway, you just, you drive and you, oh, 
the Sears used to be there. It's not there no more. Mm -hmm. You know, now they, you know, you keep driving. Oh, Arena and Circus are not there no more. It's gone. It's now apartment buildings. And where the Del Taco used to be now, it's a Walgreens. And mm -hmm. then you keep going down. It's now that shaky pizza is not there no more. Right, right. So, and then there used to be a Carl's Jr. where those new apartment luxury buildings mm -hmm. are, are not there no more. And then you keep going down, you keep going down. You go, oh, my God, that's the famous Yukon where, where I was at peace and I was quiet. And I had so much fun there at the Yukon mm -hmm. with, with everybody because we all knew everybody there. Right. You know? We all hung out there and stuff, and we kept on going, 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 going. And then, oh, 79, 69, and, and the French market is gone. It's just like, I mean, everything's gone. And every, I mean, I get it. Everything changes, but I just feel like it wasn't that long ago when all that stuff was there. And I never really thought that we would get to a point where we would be the people saying to, peop saying to other people, I remember when da 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 da, because I feel like we're, we're not, it doesn't feel that old. I know that sounds weird to say because I know we're not old people, but it's weird to see that we are in a different generation and to look back and when people talk about clubs that are coming up or nights that are coming up and you, I, I mentioned to somebody about um, a picture I posted and I was like, oh, this is one at VIP nightclub and someone was like, oh, you know about VIP nightclub? And I'm like, they, I know they, I, I can't fault them because why would they know? They, they're they new to something. But I thought, man, I was there for years and years and years. And Oz, and years. too. And Oz. And, and uh, you know, when we talk about, like, places in Pasadena, I was like, oh, I used to have a show, a little show at a place called Encounters. And people are like, what's Encounters? I'm like, it's a Metro PCS store now. Like, yeah. But, but you try to convince people yeah. and you just sound like an old person. And you're like, I'm not old. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. take a break. Every day is a new day with the Very Delta Awards program. And we are back with Nightlife Legend, the one and only Lola. We're just shooting the shit about all of it. Um, there's something that is signature to you that I feel like in the past few years has sort of evolved a little bit, but it still has its signature. And that is your hair. Yes. People have always known you for, you love big hair. I do. And you've, uh, for a long time, you were really known for m like a honey blonde updo. Yes. But it's changed a little bit because it still has the big barrels that you love. But there's like a, a root, there's like a champagne blonde. Uh, what, did you always love big hair? I've always loved big hair. I've always, for me, I've always wanted to be, if I told myself I was going to be a drag queen, because I fell into being a drag. I was doing drag since I was 14. Mm -hmm. Um. But for me, I've always wanted to be glamorous. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be beautiful and glamorous with the big hair and the jewels. I mean, I've. I mean, sometimes even sometimes people will come up to me and go, you know, it's it's not to be sounding rude or anything, but you kind of look like Elizabeth Taylor, and I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah, so, that's the goal. So if I look like Elizabeth Taylor, that's something. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've always liked big hair. Mm -hmm. You know. I remember there was someone who always tell would always tell me, uh, why do you always wear those pineapple wigs? And I would be like, because I like my pineapple wigs. I, yeah. I've always liked big hair. It's just, yeah. just who I am. I can't be, to me, it's like I, I'm, I'm a big girl, but I can't have small hair. I have to have big mm -hmm. hair to go with my big body and my big tits. Like today, we're not working. <laughs> when I think about your hair, I think about uh, something that, not a lot of people that I do shows with anymore really understand. There's a handful of people. Psychedella will remember, of course. Jules will remember. And that's when we would always go to Ellen's to get our hair done. Oh, yes. We all went to Ellen's to get our hair done. And Ellen's was Hollywood Wig, which was on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Correct. Right by the, there was the big, um, there was a, uh, like a, like a dance club, a peep, peep show. Kind uh, of the palace. There was a palace behind it. Uh-huh. And there was a peep show right next to it. And we would all pull up in the front, go in. If you, people would have their pictures up, and you would just take your wigs. And it was a place where it was like magic would happen sometimes out yeah. of the grossest wigs. Yeah. And that's not really a thing. There's not really places where we can go like that. You have to kind of know people individually now. Correct. Who are like, oh, yeah, I could do it. It's usually another queen. Like maybe they'll say, I could probably do it, but then they're trying to do their wigs or they're trying to be busy. I bought my very first wig from her. 
mm-hmm. you know. So I bought my very first wig from her when I started actually doing shows and doing stuff like that. Um, but to me, I, I always went to her because she always did such an amazing job, and she was cheap. Mm-hmm. She would she would be really cheap, you know, because if you went to the Hollywood books, I mean the Hollywood toy store, you know, it's like they'll charge you like four hundred dollars for a wig, and you're like, right, uh, for what? It's like, right. So it's like, okay, well, it's fine. And there was something that felt so glamorous about going in, and there it would be a day of dropping off your wigs. I know for me, like uh, sometimes I would go with like Psychedella. And we would go, we would make a day of it. We would, it was either either we're going downtown or we're going to Hollywood, but we were not going to do both because it ended up being too much in a day. Mm-hmm. So we would go to um, Hollywood and we would take our wigs in and then we might go look at Fredericks of Hollywood mm-hmm. and I would go to the like 5 or $10 wall to buy a pair of shoes. And, uh, you know, I mean, at the time I wasn't, this is, we're talking like late 90s. I wasn't really doing a lot of shows. I was kind of newish too to doing stuff, but you felt so glamorous, like, oh, I have to take this to the hairdresser. I have to go buy new shoes. It was five bucks. Uh, but it was a lot to us then. Yes, it was a lot back then. And then we would go have lunch. We would go to like this um, this Chinese restaurant and we felt like proper ladies, like mm-hmm. we were really doing something. And then the following couple of weeks later when you would go pick up your wig and Ellen would say like, oh, do you want me to put a plastic bag over it? Because, you know, you don't want it blowing mm-hmm. away. But I would always say, oh, I'll just take a bag because I wanted to walk out of the store with the wig and be like, and people go, oh, what's that? Oh, my gosh, look at that. And you're like, oh, oh, I'm a showgirl. That's why. Sorry, I have a, I have to care. Oh, pardon yeah. me. Because you felt like you were bragging, right? Yeah, yeah, like of course, to of straight course. people walking around. Of course. You wanted them to know that you were proud of it. And you felt also, too, for me, this confidence between like, between the store and where we were parked wasn't that far. So I was like, no one's going to kick my ass from there to there. Exactly. <laughs> I'll be okay to show exactly. up. And if we get to there and they go do start crazy, we can jump in and lock the door and go. Yeah. yeah. Most of the times I would call her and say, Ellen, is my wigs ready? And she's like, yeah, it's ready. And I would pull up right in the red zone and she'd come out and pull them and bring them to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, because it was scary back then, especially Hollywood Boulevard was pretty bad back yeah. then. I mean, you had to be really careful sometimes because sometimes, you know, you walk around with the wig and they'll be like, hey, fat faggot and this and that. Uh-huh. And it's like, well, I didn't say it to you that way, but it was. But I mean, like, you understand. I said it know? a little bit like that. It was but like, people would talk, you know, because just because you do drag. And then, you're right. You know, it's just like, it's like even to this day, even to this day, you know, you are dressed up and you're doing your shows and people would come up to you and say, um, you know, Halloween is over. Mm-hmm. And I would turn around and say, well. You know, I would say stuff like, well, I'm not talking bad about you because I see your ad on Craigslist or I see your right. ad on Rentman or I see you're doing massages because you have, you know, you're not doing any go-go dancing. So why are you talking bad about me? Right. We're in this together as a business. Right. You know, I'm not going to judge you because you're doing ads on Rentman or whatever. So don't judge me. Right. I'm not here to judge you. Right. How do you think that's changed? Like since like say the nineties to now, I mean, there, there's a, we do hear people say like, Oh, you know, all drag is valid, which I, I, I believe that's true if you're participating in drag, but you know, sometimes people like, uh, is it, I mean, how do you feel about it? How do you feel that the face of drag has changed? Do you think it has anything to do with drag race? Uh, a lot, mm-hmm. a lot has to do with drag race. Um, because, to me, it's like drag race has really opened up a lot to a lot of people. A, a lot of generation have come out of their shell mm-hmm. thanks to drag race. And it's a good thing. You know, back then, it, back then guys weren't so flamboyant. Now they are, you know, because most of the time you walk around and you go to the club and every guy's wearing makeup and da, da, da. Back then you wouldn't see it. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember you and I'm sure you remember you going to circus and Sometimes I would be scared to walk into circus when I first started right. going there because the meanest cholos would be in there. You see these gangsters and, you know, tattoos and bandanas and stuff. And then you see them dancing around together and you'd be like, well, oh, okay, well, you know. But then you see them on the street and they're there's tough man, you know. Right. So it, to me, it's like for, I mean, what Rue did is amazing. You know, I remember Rue when she used to be at Peanuts mm-hmm. and she would sit up in the booth with me and while well, I would DJ, you know, and it was great, you know. Right. Um, but 
It's opened up a lot of doors for a lot of people because, you know, everybody's going through a lot of changes in their life, a lot of genres, you know. The whole thing is is very, you know, out there. It's out there now. Right. Where in all of your Club Poppy events, uh, I know you said that TJ gets wild. Yes. But what's like the most rewarding place to work for you city wise? Like where, where's your heart? Um, my heart really, I, when I do Club Poppy, I really enjoy San Francisco mm -hmm. a lot. I mean, San Francisco has changed a lot since the pandemic. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, it's not the same no more. San Francisco, I love. San Jose, I love. Um, Los Angeles, I'm always going to love. Right. You know, um, an LA girl. I'm an LA girl. Um, but I, I would say, mm, I just, you know what, Delta is so many cities that I, yeah. I travel to, and I'm always welcome into every city, which is amazing. Uh, I enjoy doing the prides, um, you know, Long Beach and San Francisco yeah. and West Hollywood. I do those too. I host those prides, um, which, I mean, thanks to Club Poppy, it's really, you know, thanks to Jamie, he's the mm -hmm. one who really... You know, right. there's been many times I've been wanting to quit and get rid of, and just stop and just stop doing drag. I'm mm -hmm. just, it gets to the point sometimes you, you know, like you said, you know, everybody's so judgmental. They'll see you and they'll talk crap about you, whatever, talk shit about you. But two minutes later, they're like, oh, can we have a picture with you? And it's like, well, two minutes ago, you just said I was a, this, this person, this right. person. But why do you want a picture with me? Right. You know, so I have, I guess all my cities are, are really good. Yeah, I love that's every what I was city. gonna say. I think for you because because every time you promote something, you have so much heart in it. I think that you have enough heart that it can leave. You can leave a piece of it in every city that you work in. Specifically, you because you make human connections at these places. And I know we joke about sucking dick and doing all this stuff, but you really do make a human connection. There is a serious amount of Latino pride at these events. Correct. I mean, even though yes, there may be a, a an annual pride event. But you bring actual pride to it in what you do, and you bring that out in the people that are there to dance, or to, or, or, or to find someone to to have sex with, or to fantasize, right? I mean, I really feel like that happens there. Where in each of these cities are the biggest dicks? That's the question. <sighs> I mean, you said you like to go to San Francisco. I'm well, just San saying. San Francisco, Mexico has some really big dicks. Do they? Oh my God. Yes. What makes the perfect dick? The perfect dick. Nice saggy balls. Okay, it starts at the base. Starts at the. I like balls. Okay, I like to suck on some balls and a good ass. Uh huh. I love. I'm an ass guy. Uh huh. I love a good ass. Good nice. Has to be hairy. Oh, okay. I like hairy guys. Okay. So I don't like trimmed or shaved. I mean, trim's fine if it's a cute trim, but if a guy has a nice hairy ass, bubble butt ass, oh god, mm -hmm. girl. I like nice big saggy balls. I'm not too much of a size queen, but I've had every size. Mm -hmm. I've had from small to about 12 inches. Mm -hmm. And I've actually, when I was doing a TJ party one time, one of my dancers said, hey, Lola, you think he pulled out his dick and goes, do you think he could take all this? And I said, hmm, I could. And he goes, bullshit. He goes, I'll give you 20 bucks if he could take all my dick. Damn. Back then, or back then. So last week. No, yeah. last, <laughs> I was yesterday. Right. That's back then. <laughs> that <technically>. was Friday. <laughs> so, um, so he started jacking off and getting himself really, you know, mm -hmm. hard and stuff. And he goes, okay, Lola, I'm ready. So I kind of like got my lips up, put on some more lipstick. Uh huh. I took all his cock down and left my imprint, hit my lipstick imprint on did. the shaft. All right. All the way right down here. Uh -huh. And he's like, Damn, Lola, you really could take. And I said, try me. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a, like a good cocksucker, but I do like to suck dick, girl. Oh, you're not a good one. You I'm not a good one, but I know really, how to suck dick. <laughs> really? Can you ever do uh, their their cock and their balls at the same time? Does that happen? Mm hmm. I've, yes, if the dick is small, I can actually right. suck it has the to dick be like, and lick the balls at the same time. definitely under yes, six I can. inches. I could do. Well, I've had two inches. To 12 inches. Okay. I've had a small... I had this one beautiful guy one time. Uh-huh. He was so beautiful. So beautiful. Had an amazing body. And when he dropped his pants, 
his dick was this small. And I I made him feel like a stallion because he was so gorgeous. Right. Everyone's blessed differently. Everybody's blessed differently. Exactly. I mean, I guess he had one that was called infant penis or whatever it was. Mm. Infant penis mm -hmm. kind of thing. Whatever. But, I mean, I remember when I used to go to San Diego and do shows up in San Diego, mm -hmm. I would stay at a certain hotel. <laughs> and I used to put back then when Craigslist was fun, okay. you know. I've even had undercover cops. I saw this one guy who I had one time, amazing, beautiful cop, came and pulled in. And I saw him talking to his buddy. So I'm looking out through my window because I, they, the place at the hotel that I used to stay at, he would give me my hotel where I would stay. And I would, when he came and knocked on my door, I said, I said, I'm not prostituting. I'm not asking for any money, but I know you're a cop. And he goes, no, I'm not here to arrest you. I go, I'm here to, for you to suck my dick. Oh, and I wow. said, okay. So I pulled his pants down and it kind of scared me because I'm thinking, fuck, what happens if he's not a cop? And as I got his pants down all the way down, he had his gun strapped to his leg. Wow. And I was like, oof. But did I did he have my a big dick. Big dick. Big really? fat uncut cock. Uh huh. Did you use both hands? No. Sometimes they hands. prefer sometimes they prefer when you use no hands. Well, do you remember that guy that used to go to the Yukon? In the red truck? In the red truck and he would do the nails? Yes. You remember I used to wear acrylic nails at yes. that time, all the time. And what color were they? Million Dollar Red. Mm hmm Yeah. What a we, uh, well, we we did a lot. We did a lot. We did a lot back then. Yeah. And again, I mean, I'm not going to drop anybody's name, but I mean, I will say, in all certainty, and I'm totally not trying to like um, bait for applause or whatever, but it was just interesting at that time. Yeah how many celebrities would really come yeah. around and and it was like they were yes they were trying to be quiet about it because a lot of times they would just be in cars but because we didn't have social media the only social media there was was just like sort of telephoning down to the, each of the girls and being like did you see who's there like are you serious like this is really happening right yeah. now it was a different time. I mean, I'm sure that still happens, but people are able to be a little more anonymous about it yeah. now, I think. Yeah, I, I remember half the time going to Peanuts and all the celebrities that would sit in the back. Yeah, all of them. All of them would sit in the back and it'd be like, oh my God, do you see who's here? Oh, oh, oh. It's like, Do you remember like when people would walk in and Phil would be working here, the mm -hmm. Phil the manager, but instead of walking like through the dance floor, people will walk around the behind, back. Behind the bar. Behind the bar. And you'll go like this with your hand. Yeah. And what would be there? Just dicks. Just dicks. Just Nothing dicks. but dicks filling just. just... Uh-huh. And it was almost like, um, it was almost ladylike in a way because you weren't saying you were going to like be with any of those people. You were just letting them know like, I know your cock is out and we're just, hi. Yeah. Hi. You were welcoming everyone. We were. We're just like <laughs> jacking everybody else over the were coming. Well, that was you. <laughs> I actually us, no. I wasn't just saying. I was hi. a good girl. I was a good girl back then. She <laughs> did. Let's take a break. Coming up next, do you want to read me Delta or Diamond? And we are back. We are shooting the shit. I don't. I whenever I do I have guests here, I don't always shoot the shit with everybody. Some people you have a conversation with. Some people you learn new things. But then sometimes you just get to shoot the shit with somebody that you've known forever and knows. And there's only a handful of people out there, my friends, who know, like my close friends, you being one of them, um, Thank you. always champions my best. Anytime my name comes up, you go out of your way to say to people, Delta is beautiful. Delta is wonderful. Delta is, you know, you say all these things and I don't even care if you believe them, but it makes me feel good because you don't allow other people to say something negative. But at the same time, I know that you know me at my absolute worst. You know what's going to what's going to make me go off. You know what's going to make me feel bad. You know what like 10 year old kid is going to get that lives in me is going to be hurt by something. And that's when you really feel like you can shoot the shit with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you. You know, and we've lived similar lives. Mm -hmm. We've lived in similar bodies. Mm -hmm. We come from similar backgrounds. We live up the street from one another. Like, uh, we see life through very similar eyes. And generationally, mm -hmm. we're also in the same generation. So 
this is a blessing. Like right. my, when people say, oh, I'm blessed. Like, no, this is for me really a blessing that you're here. Thank you. Yeah, because, um, you know, you should be dead by now. Really. I should be dead you by should now. Be dead. Seriously. Um, I should be rich, <laughs> but <laughs> I should be dead and rich. <laughs> I should be rich. No, all right. Okay, so we're going to read letters. This is when people send in letters. Read me, Delta! I forgot my letter opener. You know, I have them, but I've been using this pen or this uh, lip brush, which is not really a lip brush. This is, uh, I use it for my lips, and I think it's, I don't know what the hell it was for, but it's like a some kind of flat angled thing. And for years, I've been using it as a lip brush. And you can see all the little bristles are all busted off. I have one like that, too. Girl. But it works, work, it works amazing. Okay. Dear Delta and guest, if you were a food item, any food item, which item of food would you be and why? I would be an open-faced sandwich because I have a tendency to overshare what's inside of me. And I smell like egg salad. Jeez. Cheers, foodie gal. She says she smells like egg salad. That's pretty disgusting. It is, huh? What would you be? <laughs> no fucking egg salad, not for damn sure. What would I be? You would be like a delicious, like a, a delicious Cuban dish. Like you would be, you would be like like a Cuban sandwich. Yeah, that's good. Pork with cheese, Swiss cheese, and pickles and mustard and all uh -huh. that kind of stuff. What do you like on the side with that? Cuban sandwich, mariquitas. Uh huh. You know, little uh -huh. banana chips. I don't know what I would be if I was going to be a food. I would definitely be a, some kind of salad, but like a really fattening salad. Like, you know, I want bacon in it. I want avocado. I want corn. I want uh, like black beans or kidney beans. I want bacon. I want dressing. I want croutons. I want sunflower seeds. I want it all in there. Just a big giant mess that loves to be tossed. That's what I would be. Mm. That sounds, sounds so good. good. That does sound good. Okay, we have another letter. Okay. Oh, it's a handbag here. Oh, it's a cute handbag. It is. Happy mm -hmm. Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. it looks like. Let's do it like this. Do you carry a handbag sometimes? I used to back in the days. Yeah. I Not remember go I remember going down to um the alleys and getting fake Louis Vuittons. Oh stuff. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Those are fun. And you would tell people, oh yeah, it's real, it's real. Do you ever buy like uh do you go downtown still? I haven't been to downtown in a long time. Yeah. You know, I used to have a person where I would get my jewelry from in downtown. Her name was Chloe mm -hmm. and she had amazing jewelry. Um when I used to get my stuff from her. But I haven't I think the last time I've been to downtown was to buy I think some material that was it. And that was not too long ago. Do you remember there used to be a place? Do you know where Something Special is? The jewelry store called Something Special? Yes. Okay. I remember years ago, and this is like over 10 years ago, across the street from there, there used to be a person who had a shop where they would rhinestone jewelry and then they would sell it there. That's Miss Chloe. That's Chloe. That's okay. Chloe. Yeah. Okay. And that was, there was no other store like that. There was no other store like that. Nobody made anything like that. Yeah. There was nobody even trying to have a couple of things like that. Yeah. She had only signature items there. Of her stuff she of, created. And yeah. they were gorgeous. That's where I used to go. Okay. That's I remember Ms. Chloe. that. I can't yeah. remember her name. Um, and that kills me when I'm when I try to describe something. I'm glad I I'm glad this is happening because I couldn't remember her name and yeah. I haven't remembered. And her it jewelry since then. was gaudy and big and big. just beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. That was Miss Chloe. Yep. Because wow. even Bobby Trendy came up to me one time and she goes, are you wearing Miss Chloe? I said, yes. She goes, oh, I love her jewelry because Bobby gets her jewelry from her. Right. But she's not there no more. She retired as well. Yeah. How about this? Hello, Delta and distinguished guest. I'm a lover of eating fast food while driving and I would like to know your thoughts on my methods. I'm driving with chicken nuggets and I want to enjoy sweet and sour sauce. I place the box of nuggets on my right thigh. My left hand is on the steering wheel, but my index finger and thumb are holding the sauce with my right hand. I plop a nugget in my mouth and then I take a sip of the sauce. Yes, a sip of the sauce. I do not dip my nuggets when driving. I once did that and I dropped the sauce on my freshly pressed khaki pants. With burritos, I tear open a mild sauce. I take a bite and then I suck some of the sauce from the packet. Is this okay? How do you enjoy a fast food item on the go that requires sauce? Do you wait until you get to a red light to dip your nugget? You are goddesses, and I need to know if my method is very Delta. Sincerely, with all my love, and the spirit as of, of Elizabeth Taylor's white diamond on Rouge Dylan. <laughs> I love that. Well, how funny that this would happen, right? Yeah. Um, 
I uh, I don't normally dip my stuff in sauces when I'm driving, but I absolutely eat fast food all the time in the car. I know it's I know I'm a pig. I don't care. Um, but I have like tried to put it in the passenger seat. Like well, I love um, I love egg rolls from Jack in the Box. And so I like to have teriyaki sauce and one ranch sauce. So I'll open the packets and I'll set them in there and I'll try to dip them. But it doesn't always work because you're driving and then you're looking and then you're underneath an 18 wheeler. So it's like I don't exactly. want to get into an accident over a fucking egg roll. Exactly. But um, I have seen people who do bite the packets of, uh, of salsa, mm -hmm. which I'm not mad at. Mm -mm. I don't do it. All. I have done it, but I think that's really smart. Do you uh, do you eat fast food in the car? Or are you somebody that has to eat it at home? No, I. Well, the life that we live, we're always eating on fast food right. to go. So, um, usually when I eat fast food, I usually like to pull over real quick and uh -huh. set my place out. Right. I like to sit like you do. Right. You know, I, I open up my cartons of if I'm doing this, this and that, whatever. There were times I would drive all the way to Melrose because I was craving chicken wings. Mm -hmm. There's a place on Melrose called Hot Wings. Oh, I know it. Yeah. Are they good? Oh, let me tell you. Are so good. Are they? Well, they used to have specials. 50, 50 wings for 25 bucks. Oh, you know? wow. So it was a deal for me because I, they give you the carrots and the celery and then you give you like six or seven dippings, you know, whatever ones uh -huh. you want. Bitch, look. She opened up that carton, laid all the 50 there. She put in, in her little, a little cup holder uh -huh. the sauces, drove down the freeway, dipping, throwing, chucking the bones out. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> like that? Just like that. Because I didn't want to leave proof. I didn't want to make, right. him, make and it look like it, I ate it, it, It's biodegradable. Yeah. I mean, a bird could come and eat the bone or whatever, but... Do you like uh, Do you like the, the what is it called? The flats or the drums? I like drums. You like drums? I like drums. Yeah. I know why, because it reminds you of giving head. Mm, no, just a little meaty. A just little meatier? Little... Do you like it very hot or like mild? Mild. Yeah. Mild. I'm not I don't eat chili. I no. hardly eat chili. So you like to have your things set up. Yeah. That's how you have to do it. Uh do you eat from a sauce packet or do you pour the do you pour the sweet and sour like he does? Um, I usually don't eat from a sauce package because most of the time many hands have been grabbing that sauce package. So I mean, how often are you I mean back in the days, I mean, even to this day I still don't do that. Um, but I mean you would have to clean it. Right. Not that I'm a perfectionist, but I like to clean my stuff and then eat it and suck it off. No, you're thing. a very clean person. That That is the thing about you. That yeah, really is. So, I mean, it's just like how many dirty hands have touched this or how many, right. you know what I mean? How so, many rats have been How many rats across? have been crossing, you know? It's like when you see those, I know you're a huge fan of Taco Bell. <laughs> uh -huh. I like Taco Bell. So, I mean, it's like those dehydrated beans. Come on. It's like, I know, I know they're so good, aren't they? They're so authentic. They are, they're, but they're so good because you put the little sauce and you put, you know, what's really good too. You get that and you ask for some sauce and the cheese, and then you get some nacho cheese and put it on top. Oh, okay. Oh, so good. So I heard about people getting ordering uh, nachos from Taco Bell, and then you order the um, you order a, the chips separate. So they'll just give you a cup with all of the cheese and yes. everything, and then you can dip your own. Yes, yeah, yeah. You, can you do like that. nachos? I love nachos. Yeah, I do too. I like nachos. I do too. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, these letters, again, uh, if you want to write a letter, it may get answered. It may just get lightly addressed and we'll just start talking about eating ass. You never know where it's going to end up, but you can send your letters to readmedelta at gmail.com. Any questions about this episode, previous episodes, or maybe, I don't know, you just want to know better how to be prepared for anything that could happen. Anything. All over the coast of southern california and northern california as it were um thank you all for listening to very delta you can search for very delta on your podcast apps we come out every monday and you can find us right here on the mom podcast youtube channel also a special hello to everyone watching on youtube uh subscribe to mom podcast so you don't miss an episode we love you so much thank you for supporting thank you for hanging on for midnight to come so you can jump on and start chit-chatting sometimes i'm on there and i am really interacting because people are like 
is that really this person? It really is me. I just don't have a lot of followers, but it really is me when I am on there. So say hi to me if you see me. Uh, also, again, send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work. And what social media are you on? Uh, Lola Veronica 66 on Instagram. On Instagram. That's that's the best place for people to find because you yeah. can like throw up a video, a picture, a memory, a story. I love all of that. Also, you can follow the show on Instagram and TikTok at Very Delta, because if you're not, you're really only getting 50% of the Delta. Join me next week right here for another episode of Very Delta. And until then, keep things very, very Delta. This episode of Very Delta was brought to you by Orange Diamond, the official emoji of the Very Delta show. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. Hi, it's me, Delta Work. Do you like to see me go off? Well, if you do, hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, because we don't want you to miss any of our mom podcast exclusive content.